Today what I want to talk about is I want to talk about the end of an era. The end of the era of overfinancing, of over leveraging your real estate purchase to make it make money. Um, I think we need to look at this to understand why real estate is profitable in all markets, good or bad, up or down, whatever. And then we can really start to get our arms around this. When I first started buying real estate back in the uh, 80s, I was buying houses for $50,000 from, well, actually from $25,000 a piece up to $50,000 a piece and turning them into rental houses. I don't think I ever bought or purchased a rental house over $50,000 for myself. In fact, I think the, probably the most expensive one I ever bought was in the 40s. Now, <clears throat> when houses started selling at the end of that recession for $60,000, $70,000, $80,000 dollars a piece, and the very same homes that I had bought for twenty-five dollars to fifty were now selling for eighty dollars to $100,000, I thought it was time to get out of the single-family uh, housing business and move over to the multifamily housing business. And when I did so, I had to put more money down. Uh, realistically though, it didn't really matter. And here's why, and this is what we need to understand about this whole picture is this, is that if you take a look at what people were doing here in the last five years, people were buying houses that I bought in the 80s, same houses, same age, 70s, 80s construction, they were buying these houses and paying as much as $100,000 a piece. Now what made this deal look attractive was that they were able to buy these houses at $100,000 with nothing down. And when you put nothing down, it really doesn't matter to you that the property only cash flows $50 or $100 a month. If you look at the dynamics or you look at the economics of it all, um, the, the minimum or the maximum down payment anybody was putting down was 10%. But people were literally getting 0% financing deals. So let's take a look at the thing. We buy a house at $100,000. And the property uh, at $100,000 purchased, if you would put an 80% loan on it, this house would cash flow $200 a month. But then you'd be putting $20,000 down. You'd be making $200 a month. And that'd be $2,400. On $20,000, you'd have about a 10%, 12% return. On the other hand, what people could do is they could put 10% down. And when they put 10% down, they would only have $10,000 out of pocket. But now their cash flow would only be, uh, would go down from $200 a month to $100 a month. And so you now have a person that's still making $1,200 a year on $10,000 is a 12% return. Then what came along was 100% financing. And you have somebody buy a house for $100,000, but because you finance the entire amount, you now only have $50 a month positive cash flow. But $50 a month on nothing down is an infinite rate of return the way they see it. However, the issue is you've only made $600 a year in cash flow, and if any one little thing ever went wrong, one month you couldn't rent it, or an air conditioner went out or something, you would actually lose money that year in that business. So why did people do this? Because there's really two types of people. There are investors, people who take their money and invest their money, and there are speculators, people that go out there and gamble. What these people were doing, they were speculating on the fact that they thought real estate would go up forever, and that if they could just get their hands on it and buy it, a little bit of cash flow would get them along the way, and somewhere down the line they'd sell the house and make a lot of money. That was the whole idea. It was a speculation move. However, when you are leveraged to that degree, and the market moves against you, you're very easily wiped out. You're upside down. And as we see, I mean, this is, this is like closing the gate after the animals have left the barn. But uh, the reality is we, know, we need to talk about it because we still have not gotten the understanding that we need of the issue to be able to move forward and make a lot of money. So how do we make a lot of money? Well, here's the deal, folks. We're back to buying houses for 50000 bucks again. And yes, we have to put 20% down in most cases, unless we use a hard money lender, in which case we can borrow the money from them to buy it and put nothing down and then refi the property out of that loan and still do it for nothing down. But to do that, a hard money lender wants to see you have a little bit of money in the bank. Not a lot. So it still works. But why is that important? What's different now? Well, what's different is 
is we're buying that same house again that you were paying $100,000 for the last two or three years. We're buying it for 50000 bucks. But now, instead of having $200 a month cash flow, we have four or $500 a month cash flow because we bought the property so cheap. In fact, I did one the other day in one of my demonstrations, live deal, pulled up a house, $70,000 below market value with a $644 a month cash flow. Now think about this. When will you really make the most money? When you're buying a house for $100,000 and hope it goes up? Or when you're buying a $100,000 house for $50,000 knowing that somewhere along the line it has to go back up in value again because you can't build them for less than $100,000. Somewhere along the line it has to regain some portion of its market's value. But while we're getting to that point, making $600 a month cash flow is a $7,200 a year cash flow in 10. That's a 72% return. My friends, the numbers don't lie. Now is the most profitable time for a real estate investor. Notice, I did not say speculator. I said real estate investor.